For my My Favorite Personality Thing project, I decided to discuss Raymond Picatel because I find his series and different ideas on personality and personality traits very intriguing. Um, he is discussed in the book, but I went a step further and I actually completed my own for a 16 personality factor test and I discussed some of my findings at the end. So, Cattell's life, he was born in England March 20th, 1905. He attended the University of London where he received his Bachelor of Science and his PhD. He then taught at multiple different universities and he wrote a couple different books. While he was still in London, he taught at Exeter University and he actually founded England's first ever children's guidance clinic. He then was welcomed and moved to the United States where he taught at Columbia University, Clark University, Harvard and the University of Illinois all before retiring. He ended up retiring to Hawaii where he ended up passing away February 2nd, 1998. So his work and contributions, he did a lot with personality like I said before. He classified different personality traits into these different categories. And then what I found most interesting were the differences between the source traits and the dynamic traits and how your dynamic traits kind of mold your source traits in my opinion. So the basic elements of personality are defined as your source traits. So they're very by the book, whereas the dynamic traits kind of are the motivation behind that, like the motivation be behind what makes you, you makes your personality individual, which I found very interesting. He is probably most famously known for his 16 personality factor, which I'll discuss later. And then his stages of personality development and his different assessment types. He used life records, questionnaires, and tests, and I believe he was the first to use all of these different, uh, different types of assessments in his work. So his stages of personality development, I find pretty intriguing actually, because they follow the form of life pretty well. So you have infancy, which is birth to age six, this is when you're developing, you're getting ready to go to school, getting ready to go to kindergarten, and it's formation of your super ego, your ego, and your social attitudes, which makes sense because it's kind of what you do when you're first getting there, growing up. Then childhood, age six to 14. So this is like elementary school, middle school. And this is where you're at school, you're gaining more identification with your peers, and you're gaining a little bit more independence from your parents. Adolescence, age 14 to 23, this is high school, college. Um, you're going to find more of yourself during these stages. You're going to explore sex and with becoming more independent, you're going to have more conflicts and you're going to have to be able to resolve them. So I found that one very, very true with my life right now. Um, maturity, age 23 to 50, there's going to be a lot of personal and professional successes. This is where personality becomes less flexible and more, but you become more emotionally stable, which makes sense. Play maturity, 50 to 65, I like to think of this as like your midlife crisis, um, where you re-examine all your values and you try and find a new self. Old age is 65 onward. This is just defined by kind of like loneliness and insecurity because there are a lot of losses that happen in this age frame. So his 16 personality factor test is actually a forced question, a uh, forced choice question style where it's like agree, disagree, somewhat those kind of answers and then based on your answers it's scored on a continuous scale of one to four it analyzes these 16 different personality factors and now it is currently used for career counseling i took one in high school and i took another one for this exam or for this project and it is also used for personnel selection for jobs clinical diagnoses of mental health disorders which i found quite intriguing because it kind of tells you how people think which makes sense and it is used to plan different types of therapies. So these are my actual results from my free online version, and they are scored continuously from a zero to a four. So for warmth, I scored a 3.2 out of four, which means I'm more easygoing and attentive versus detached and reserved, which I like to think is true. I like to be very engaging when I'm around people. For emotional stability, I scored a 2.5, which means I'm a little bit more adapted and mature than variable. I am in college, I am a female, I have my, my mood swings, which makes sense. Dominance, I scored 2.4, which means I'm more competitive than docile. I am very competitive, but I know where the line is 
between when it's good to be competitive and when it's not. And so I feel like that is a good expression of me. Rule conscious, I scored a three. I'm a rule follower. I know it. It's just, it's what it is. Abstractness, I scored a 1.9. Um, I'm more practical and imaginative. I'm very by the books and I, I just know that's how I am. Openness to change, I scored a 2.5, um, which means I'm a little bit more analytical and flexible, which makes sense more so than traditional and conservative, just based on my personality. Self-reliant, I am a very independent person. I scored 2.4, this makes sense. Perfectionism, I scored a 2.3, which makes sense. I'm organized at home or at school and I'm a little bit more disorganized at home. Um, I found these results very intriguing and I love that it scored on a continuous scale because it just proves that there's so much variability in different types of personality and what makes a person them. And yeah, that is what I found most interesting about Raymond B. Cattell.